Turning now to your community focus, we told you earlier this hour that the Board of Elections is now reversing course and investigating alleged forgeries on the nomination papers for congressional candidate Sabina Matos. But a criminal investigation into that matter is already underway. Here to talk about that and more, Attorney General Peter Narona, thanks for being here. Hi, Kim. So let's dive right in. Early voting starts this month. The mm -hmm. primary is in early September. Will voters know whether a crime has been committed here before they have to cast their ballots? You know, I can't really say. Um, we're going to take as much time as we need to do this the right way. Um, and so I, I have to say, I don't anticipate, uh, given the sheer volume of work that I see ahead of us, um, in terms of, and in terms of the way investigations tend to play themselves out as you move witness to witness, that voters will know that by the time they're going to the polls. Do you think they're entitled to that information, though, before they cast Well, look, you know, they may be entitled to it or not, but, you know, I can't change the normal process of a criminal investigation to, uh, to match electoral expectations. I think the real, if we're being candid here, I think the real, uh, the real thing that should have been done to give voters confidence was for someone, uh, not certainly not my office, either the boards of canvases or probably more appropriately the board of elections mm -hmm. to actually verify whether those 728 signatures, uh, if that's the number I think it is, are valid or not. But that's not something we would ever do in the course of a criminal investigation. And criminal investigations out of fairness to the people who are the subject of them need to proceed at the appropriate pace. So the Board of Elections is now going to review those signatures, as you mentioned. One of the members who voted against it today, though, again, it was a five to do two vote, said he voted against it because he thought it would interfere with your investigation. Is yeah, I don't know what that's based on. I mean, okay. I, I've made the same point now for a couple of weeks without, you know, calling for it directly. I think it only makes sense to give voters the confidence by the time they go to the polls as to whether or not uh, candidate Matos Matos had got the signature she needed to get. I think, right. it makes, I think it makes sense for that purpose alone. Last question on this. Uh, Matos has distanced herself from these fraudulent signatures, these allegations, saying she was essentially the victim of a firm her campaign hired. But others have pushed back, saying it happened under her watch. Is the law clear here about who is ultimately going to be held accountable? Sure, the, the law is very clear that to be held um, accountable, you have to willfully and knowingly and intentionally commit a crime. So. How far that reaches into the, the Matos investigation um, beyond perhaps an initial person, that's why investigations take time and need to be done right. Okay, switching gears. Last year, your office announced a pretty major break in a cold case rape from the 1980s. DNA linked a man named Frank Theis to the crime where he allegedly abducted two little girls at knife point and se sexually assaulted both of them, a pretty heinous crime. A judge recently set his bail at $20,000. He posted it. He's mm -hmm. now free. And it's my understanding because he hasn't been convicted, he doesn't have to register as a sex offender. Mm -hmm. So he can essentially, you know, slip under the radar. What's yeah. your reaction to this? Yeah, look, we're, we are were, we were concerned about that. In fact, bail was granted over our objection. I mean, we thought he should have been held without bail. But we, at the end of the day, um, we don't control things like whether bail gets sent or what, what sentences are in the end. But yeah, look, I'm concerned about it, and that's why we objected. You know, we'll do everything we can to make sure that no one is victimized, um, you know, going forward. Again, he's, you know, presumed innocent until he's convicted, but sure, we're concerned about it, and that's why we object objected to bail. We also felt like he was a flight risk since he had no ties to Rhode Island, but at the end of the day, those decisions aren't our call. We li we live them, we live with them, but we'll do everything we can to keep our Islanders safe. Just today, a short time ago, your office announced that you're objecting to some proposed health insurance rate hikes by multiple insurers. It would affect more than 160,000 mm -hmm. Rhode Islanders health insurance costs. Everything's getting more expensive yeah. these days. Why do you think health insurance shouldn't go up? Uh, well, because for that reason, frankly, you know, for one thing, we look at a number of things, you know, first of all, how the insurers are doing financially, mm. and particularly the larger ones, Aetna and Cigna, for example, have done very, very well in terms of their revenue and their profits. So you take that into account, and you're also looking at how are everyday Rhode Islanders uh, doing in terms of their costs, and they're in exactly the, the other place, which is they're really struggling. And so for us, you know, this can't be like college tuition that goes up every year simply because it seems like it has to. Uh, that's why we're pushing back on these increases as we have each of the last two or three years. And we hope that the, uh, the health, com uh, health insurance commissioner will hear what we're, t what we're saying here and, and deny those increases or at least make them lower than what they've been, ask been asking for. 
All right, and we've got 30 seconds left. Catalytic converter yeah. thefts, they continue to be an issue. You just uh, charged a couple out of Fall River. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it was some pretty thorough, you know, shoe leather detective work yeah. that nabbed them. What went on here? Yeah, really great job by local and state police to really, you know, follow the trail of these catalytic converters to see, to find out where they were sold, trace them back to the cars, use some, uh, some video uh, surveillance evidence to identify who this couple was came over the line from Fall River to do this. I mean, frankly, you, you said it. I mean, that's the kind of gumshoe work that has to be done in these cases. They're complicated cases to solve, but when we solve them, we're going to hold them accountable to send a message to others who would do the same thing. All right, we are out of time. Attorney General Peter Nerona, thanks for being here at 4. Good to be with you, Kim, as always.